These two models represent the two parallel pipeds. The bases of these two shapes are oriented in the same way so that AC in both of these rhombi are both the long diagonals. In the shape on the left, we have that DF is the long diagonal, and in the shape on the right, AE is the long diagonal. Notice that the parallel piped on the left leans to the left in the direction of this long diagonal. The parallel piped on the right leans back into the plane of the image, also in the direction of this long diagonal. We are asked to compare the volumes of these two shapes. Since the volume is base times height and they have the same congruent base, it suffices to compare the heights of these two parallel pipeds. We can find the height from this vertex and we note that because of the symmetry of this shape, the vertex is gonna be directly above the long diagonal. In the right parallel piped, when I draw a height from this vertex, I'll label G, the base of this altitude is going to be on the shorter diagonal. We'll see a better view of the altitude of the right parallel piped here. I'll draw in the remaining edges. Here is vertex G and the shorter diagonal from B to D. And then I'm going to find the length of this altitude, which will be directly over the shorter diagonal. We'll refer to the left parallel piped as case one, where we have AE is less than DF, and case two, where AE is the long diagonal. Let's sketch our two shapes. We'll start with the rhombus at the base. This one leans to the left. The base is rhombus ABCD, where AC is the long diagonal and BD is the short diagonal. The rhombus on the left face has AE is the short diagonal and DF is the long diagonal. In case two, the base is the same, but the left face will have the rhombus oriented differently. Here's the base of our rhombus, but now the parallel piped is going to lean into the plane of the whiteboard. A, B, C, D again, where A, C is the long diagonal. A, E is now a long diagonal, and D, F is the short diagonal. We're gonna find the height from vertex H on the left. When I draw this altitude, it's going to hit the diagonal in the base rhombus, diagonal A, C. We'll call this point K. In case two, when I draw an altitude from vertex G, the altitude from G is going to intersect the shorter diagonal BD. We'll call this point L. Let's begin first by finding the side length of these rhombi. The diagonals intersect at perpendicular bisectors, forming four right triangles. This leg is root 21 over two. This one is root 31 over two. If this is the side length of our rhombus, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And so the side length is the square root of 13. Let's start with case one and our first right triangle, which is HKC. This has H1, which we're trying to find. HC is the side length. Expression for H1 has the square of this length is equal to 13 minus CK squared. We can draw another right triangle, which is BHK. Here's H1. BH is the diagonal of the face here in front. This length is the same as the diagonal AE on the other face. And in this case, it's root 21. So we have another expression for H1 in terms of the square of BK. I'm gonna draw this shorter diagonal BD at the base of our shape, and we'll call the midpoint of these two diagonals M. These diagonals are perpendicular, so we have a right angle here, and we're gonna use right triangle BMK. BM is half the length of the shorter diagonal, so root 21 over two, and we can write MK as MC minus CK. So if BK squared is MB squared plus MK squared, we can substitute 21 over four and MC minus CK, but MC is also one half of the diagonal, which is root 31 over two. So we'll substitute root 31 over two minus CK, this quantity squared. Now we can combine these three equations Let's start with our two equations for H1. Let's rearrange our terms and we'll substitute for BK squared and we'll combine like terms and solve for CK. And we can substitute and solve for the height of this first parallel piped. And we'll take the square root, root 378 in the numerator, root 31 in the denominator. Now let's go to our second parallel piped. We'll find the height of this one. We'll start with right triangle GLB. GL is the height that we're looking for, H2. GB is the side length of our rhombus, so that's root 13. So we have an expression for H2, 13 minus the square of LB. Now I'm going to draw right triangle GLC. GL 
is again the height. The distance from G to C, which is the diagonal of this rhombus BCHG, is the same as the diagonal from D to F on the opposite side, and that's root 21. So here's our other expression for the square of H2. To combine these, I'm going to mark the midpoint of this diagonal BD with M. I'm going to draw MC, which is half of this long diagonal, and we have right triangle MLC. MC is half of the diagonal AC, which is root 31 over 2. We have from this right triangle and substituting for CM, let's express ML in terms of LB. This is LB minus MB, which is half of that shorter diagonal, so we can substitute. Notice that I drew this altitude from G to L, and the way I drew it, it looks like L is closer to vertex D than to vertex B. But if, in fact, the base of this altitude was between B and M, that's okay. The distances are going to be the same, and our calculations will be the same. Let's combine these equations. We'll start for these expressions for H2. We'll rearrange the terms and substitute for CL squared. We'll expand and combine like terms. Solve for LB root 21. Once we find LB, we'll substitute it back in for H2, which is 13 minus the square, 25 over 21, and then take the square root to find H2. We have root 248 in our numerator and root 21 in our denominator. We're asked to compare the ratio of the volume of the larger to the volume of the smaller. Since these two parallel pipeds have the same base, it suffices to compare the ratio of the larger height to the smaller height. If we make a mistake and don't know which is the bigger height, we just look at the fraction that results and see if it's larger than 1. We'll start with h1 over h2, and we find the prime factorizations of these numbers under the square root sign. In the numerator, we get 2 and 7 squared and 9 squared, and in the denominator, we have another 2, a 2 squared, and a 31 squared. Canceling the terms and taking the square root, our numerator is 63 over 62, which is greater than 1, and the problem masks for m plus n, which is 125. If you'd like me to solve any other contest problems, please leave them in the comments.